Hey guys, Plan Academy is evolving. And one of the things we've incorporated this year is regular live training. So we're doing live sessions every week covering all sorts of topics around planning and scheduling, good project management, project controls, some leadership skills as well, even risk in Power BI. We've got a whole curriculum of things we're delivering. And if you're an organization, if you're part of an organization that needs this kind of training, you should talk to us because we have an incredible pro plan that might be a great fit for you. I know we think resource loading is um, is also a huge exercise. It depends how your schedule is built and whatnot, but I did want to show you like how quickly it could be done as well for your own analysis. So, so like I said, maybe this is take your schedule, make a copy of it. This is for your own analysis to help you, you know, dig into some of these things. Um, for example, let's come down into, we have uh, a bunch of chambers. So, so the way I've, you know, I'm happy to be pretty lucky because there's chamber one, chamber two, it's actually chamber three, chamber two, chamber one. It's all together. So I could actually, to resource load this, I could actually just hold shift, highlight those three, come over here, give me all my resources. So this is chamber work and this is done by my vault crew. There it is. Done, like that part's resource loaded now. And if I hit F, F5, I get the graph, like it's, it, it didn't take me a long time and you can do it with unactualized work uh, is kind of the best you won't be able to do it with actualized work but right there if i if i look at my vault crew again i let's say i only have one oh look i've got overlapping work again i can see here i've got two vaults two bits of work that are overlapping now, I the way my schedule structured, this work is all on top of each other, so it's really easy. But if your schedule was, you know, vault work way at the top and then vault work way at the bottom, you'd you'd never be able to to get this view without kind of doing something like this. Now, here's another bit of a weird thing that happens with P6. Look at my screen for a moment. You'll notice I have lower cabinets and then upper cabinet seems like it actually is a sub node underneath but i know that it's not there's a there's a bit of a disconnect between what's showing on this screen and what was what i created on my wbs screen so once in a while this happens and there's a quick fix for it you just tell p6 to refresh the data and you can do that either from the file menu um, refresh data, or you can hit F5. <laughs> when I refresh the data, it fixes that sub node. So I don't actually have a sub node. I just have all these green guys. So that's a little trick. If you ever feel like something's not looking right, if you worked on a different screen and then came back and something's not quite right, you can hit F5 or file refresh data to get things looking good again. So we got three activities, let's link them together. I like to do this. Um, I like to highlight, I think, I think this is a really good practice for everybody to get the hang of. I like to highlight the first guy and then hold shift on my keyboard and highlight the last guy. So that I highlight all three like that. And then I right click and do link activities. Again, it's a shortcut. It lets me link a whole bunch of activities together all at the same time. So you can see it actually has added the relationships from the first one to the second one and the second one to the third one automatically for me. And then you can see the relationships down here. I'm on the relationships tab in the bottom half of my screen, but that's my favorite trick, linking a bunch of activities or highlighting, right clicking link. Let's expand them out. So let's go ahead and schedule what we've got so far. So hit the schedule button. Schedule. Okay. Everything's linked with a finish to start relationship. That's the default relationship, but you know, something's happening. We're we're start we're starting to kind of uh, build this out.
actually something I discovered in building this schedule for my contract is the this uh, resource assignments screen. You can also get to it from the project menu, project resource assignments. So one of the things that um, I really like about this screen, it actually it was very, very invaluable for the cost loading because the schedule is also cost loaded. So it really helped me uh, with the cost loading. What does this screen do? Let me say, let me say this. So on the resources tab, we have a line, all these lines, right? It basically takes all those lines that are buried in this tab and puts them all on another screen. So, so these are all the resource assignment uh, lines. The nice part of this is this thing now. So this is helpful uh, data here as well. And, and oftentimes we actually extract this data. You can, you can take all this data and extract it to Excel if you want. And in fact, I'll show you that in just a minute. But this is your total man hours uh, per activity. So for your vault crew, what you're doing now is you're listing your crews and you're showing all the work that the crew's doing. So it's like in the other screen, you got activities with crews. In this screen, you got crews with the activities. These are the activities that they're doing. So it just kind of turns it upside down. Um, but this is again, a really nice way to analyze um, your work. And so you can see you get totals up here, right? So you, you can see the total work for the vault crew in August, in September, and maybe you want to take this and graph it yourself in Excel. You can do that. Uh, but again, a nice, nice way to get this, the raw data. It's, it is the same data that we're looking at in this graph, but now you're getting the numbers. How do I get this stuff into Excel? This is one of the questions that comes up. Okay, so let me load up Excel here first. This is weird, but this works. You uh, right click and do like select all. Um, Okay, so maybe it's on the edit menu. Select all, just copy everything. Notice when I do select all, it copies this data and it copies this data over here. It just highlights everything. And you just control C and you can come over here and control paste it, control V paste it. Now it's formatted a little bit wonkily. You're gonna spend some time um, mucking around with the formatting and whatnot. This is a quick way to get the data out of P6 into Excel for graphing or further analysis. If you want to use some pivot charts, pivot graphs, all that kind of stuff, you can do it really easily that way. So how? let's just review this one more time. Um, inside calendars, you can see how that conversion works. Let's see the corporate guy. Here he is. Modify. It's on the time periods button. This right here, hours per day, is your conversion factor. So when I type in 1D, eight hours gets assigned. That's super important to notice. And a lot of time I see people make calendars and forget to set this. And then you create a whole mess. Create a whole mess if this is set to 10 and you think it's an eight hour calendar big messy problem okay so that's super important for us to know about what about these other guys weeks months years well i don't care about them you can send them to whatever you want these are rough and the reason i say i don't care about them is because like we normally just work in days or hours that's it in p6 i don't really look at weeks now there are conversions in the same way you type in 1d I'm going to show you this, but you can also type in one W, one week. What's in 40? You can type in one M for month. It uses the same values from that conversion to convert to 172 hours. You can type in one Y, 2000. And, but I never look at data in terms of years or months or anything. I usually look at it in terms of days and, and whatnot. So I don't really focus on those. I care only about the days. So that's where those conversions happen. The question is then, how do I, how do I fix all this or what do I do? Well, number one, if you can think about it, make sure you have your calendar set properly before you enter in your durations. 
that's important. Probably um, you're going to hit this and all you have to do is just correct your durations. So, and we actually do this in one of the workshops in P6 Foundations because I think it's an important uh, thing to notice where we change the calendar and all the durations end up being like 1.6 days or 1.3 or whatever. And then I have you go through and retype all the durations in to fix everything. So if you retype in the durations in terms of days, all your durations get back to the proper converted value in terms of hours. So that's that's one of the things you want to be aware of. So that's what I that's all I want to say uh, about changing calendars. You're going to do it. Just be aware your durations will may be affected if you're changing to a calendar that has different durations in terms of hours per day. And you're going to have to reset your durations. And if there's any questions, please feel free to throw them out. These live sessions are super rich and exciting, but they're only available right now to organizations who are on our Plan Academy Pro Plan. So if you're in an organization, you better check it out. You could be here with us doing this work every week.